Hello, now we're going to continue our work with factorizing in algebra. And the last day we finished up, or the last time we finished up with our factorizing our uh, quadratics, which again we know is going to be very important when we're dealing with the roots of quadratic equations. So we looked for the patterns in our n numbers that add up to our uh, coefficient of the x, the middle term. And we use that to factorize down into two brackets. The other way that we can approach this is to pretend like we have an equation and we're looking for the roots. And then we use the minus b formula, the formula that gives us the x coordinates of the roots, in order to find our factors. Now, why would we bother doing it this way? Because it always works. So that might be one of the things that, that uh, you remember from junior cycle. One of the advantages of the minus b formula is you are able to work out what the factors are uh, regardless of, or what the roots are, regardless of whether you can spot the patterns in the uh, factors or not. So the minus b formula works even if the numbers here end up getting very difficult to factorize, or in some cases, functionally impossible to factorize. So what we're going to do is pretend like we have our expression equal to zero. So pretend that we're finding the roots of this equation now. And then at the end, we're going to work backwards. If we know the roots, we can find the factors, which is another idea that's going to be important later on. So a reminder of how it is we use the minus b formula. We write down our minus b formula, which is in your log tables if you've forgotten it. But really, that should be something that you have memorized. And our equation has to be in the form, or standard form. So our equation has to be in the form everything equals zero in order to use the minus b formula. So from that, I can read that a is two, b is minus seven, and c is three. Very common error is to forget the signs. So it's important that we write out explicitly what a, b, and c are, and it minimizes the chance of a mistake. And also we write down the equation we're going to use on the page before we sub into it. Now, if we do that, we have x is equal to minus b is minus minus 7, plus or minus the square root of minus 7 squared, minus 4 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3, all over 2a, which is 2 by 2. Tidying that up, we end up with 7 plus or minus the square root of 25 all over 4. I have skipped steps here. You are able to do that maths yourself. Tidying that slightly. Tidying that slightly, I would get square root of 25 is 5. So I end up with 7 plus or minus 5 all over 4. Two valid answers because I have plus and minus. I know that I usually get two roots from a quadratic equation. So I have 7 plus 5 all over 4, or I have x is equal to 7 minus 5 all over 4. So the root ends up being at 7 plus uh, 5 is 12, we end up with 3 for one of our equations. We end up with x is equal to a half as the root of the other equation. Now. Sorry, of the other, yeah, the other equation. That's the root. Now, I know if I picture how it is that I would have done this in junior search, I know that if that's the root, if I could get stuff involving x equals zero, that would be the factor equals zero. If I remember back to when I would have had, if I go back up on the page here, if I had that equals zero, my next step, my next step would have been 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, x minus 3 is equal to 0, and then rearrange that and end it up with x is equal to ooh, a half and x is equal to uh, 3 as my solutions. So I can do that in reverse to get the factors. So if I know the roots, I can rearrange these two equations to get 
them equal to zero, and then I'll have the factors of my quadratic. So rearranging here, we subtract three from both sides to get everything equal to zero. X minus three is equal to zero. So X minus three is one of my factors. And rearranging here, I need to multiply both sides by two. I get 2x is equal to 1, subtract 1 from both sides to get everything equal to 0, and I get 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, therefore 2x minus 1 is a factor. So you can see how we could use the minus b formula to solve any of these factorizing problems. So it has the advantage that it always works, no matter how complicated the numbers become, it always works. The importance of the other method, the importance of the pattern finding method, is that the ability to spot patterns in numbers will determine a lot of the success we have at higher level leaving cert. So it is critical that we get good at factorizing by spotting patterns, because patterns are so important to our work. But it's also very important that we know the minus b formula method because there will be times when spotting the patterns is either difficult or basically impossible and we will have to have that tool available to us so both of these methods are necessary to know and know well now the next bit is a bit of memory work which is unfortunate we often in maths try to do things by uh, being able to derive them in this case these uh, formulae are not in your log tables, so you need to memorize them. And they are the difference of two cubes and the sum of two cubes formula. And if you see, just like if we see something squared and then a minus or something, in, yeah, if we see something squared and then a minus, we immediately think of dots. In this case, if we see something cubed and then a minus and then something else cubed or something cubed and then a plus and something else cubed, we should be immediately thinking of these two formula here. They're simply a matter of getting used to uh, applying them. The way that the only thing to point out is how it is you remember the signs going on here. So if I have a cubed minus b cubed, first term minus uh, second term cubed, then the first bracket, the little bracket, is going to have a minus, and the larger bracket in the middle is going to have a plus. Uh, and if I have the sum of two cubes, then the first bracket is going to be positive and the e longer bracket is going to be negative. So the signs swap. The little bracket is going to have the same sign as we started with, and then the um, larger bracket is going to have the opposite sign. And other than that, we simply need to practice it a little bit to get it stuck in our heads. So if we take an example like this one here, 64x cubed minus x plus 3 all cubed. What I can see is that I have a cube and a minus and a cube. Now, I don't know off the top of my head whether 64 is a cube uh, number or not, but when I check, I see that it is 4 cubed. So first job is to write it in this form, something cubed minus something cubed. And now I can apply my pattern. This is a cubed minus b cubed. So applying my, uh, applying my formula, I have first term a minus second term b. So 4x minus x plus 3. It doesn't matter that this is a bracket. It's something cubed. So I can still apply the pattern to it without any issues. Then I have a cubed, so 4x cubed, sorry, squared, I should say, a squared plus a multiplied by b, so 4x multiplied by x plus 3. And then I have plus b squared, x plus 3 squared, close bracket. You can see this gets quite long. 
And now I just want to do a little bit of tidying. So technically I've used my formula now, but in order to get full marks in the exam, I do out a little bit of the multiplication that's in the brackets to show that I tidied it up. Obviously, if you multiply all of this out, if you do all of the multiplication, we know that we'll just end up back where we started, which isn't what we want. So we just do a little bit of tidying, like with these brackets here, so that it doesn't look like quite such a mess. So I'm just multiplying out my brackets. And I remember my rhyme here, or phrase here, square the first, first by the second and double it, square the second. And that saves me time in what's already quite a long, messy sum. If I start trying to add in having x multiplied by x plus 3, plus 3 multiplied by x plus 3, this line gets ridiculously long and it gets quite difficult to follow what I'm doing as I'm writing it. So that's the advantage of things like our little rhyme for squaring out a bracket. It means that in big long sums like this, we can keep track of what we're doing. So I have four in this bracket here, I have 4x minus x, so I end up with 3x minus 3 in my first bracket. And now here I have a bunch of terms that I need to add together. So I have an x squared, an x squared, and an x squared, and I have an x and an x. And I'm putting different symbols underneath them to keep track of what I've got. So 16 plus 4 plus 1, I end up with 21 x squared, 12 plus 6 is 18 x plus 9. And that's as far as I need to go. I don't want to multiply that out because the whole point was to factorize uh, my problem. But this has brought it down to a point where it looks reasonably neat and I have it factorized into two brackets. And a reminder, these are the factors of my original expression. So I can divide, if I take 64 cubed minus x plus 3 cubed, and I divided it by one of my factors, I would end up getting the other factor out. This is effectively just rearranging my formula. If you think about it, I've divided both sides of my equation by uh, 3x minus 3. So these formula are quite large and it can be easy to lose track of what it is you're doing with them and why. But what you are doing is factorizing this cubic difference. And it's going to give you the two numbers, the two expressions that multiply together to give us our original expression. So if we divide it by one of our factors, we get the other factor out. So it's important that we keep a grasp on what it is we're actually getting out of that formula, that we're getting the factors of our original expression. And those are the skills that we need for now.